Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT, and I'm here with the indefatigable Joseph Worthington. That's right, never sleep Worthington. <laughs> Indefat- the indefatigable. Indefat- I don't fatigue? Yeah, you don't fatigue, you're, you're kind of unstoppable in that way. Fuck yeah, bro. That's a good line. Speaking to my character. <laughs> I am, that's the truth. <laughs> my friends, uh, for some of you out there, you're probably wearing flip-flops, and you're probably wearing sneakers. But we're going to talk about... Not at the same time. Maybe not at the same time. That's a different look. Um, that's bad for your jiu-jitsu. We're going to explain why. We're going to explain why the common build-up... Don't get me wrong. I like me some Air Max 90s. I like me some Jordans. I don't. I don't. No, but I mean, I used to. Sorry, I should say I used to. But I don't, I don't play that game no more. Because what I mess with now... Is these bad boys. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Get that Vivo. Get that duck foot. Yeah, I got some going on too. Ooh, right yeah. here. It's the goods. Um, yeah, we're talking about footwear um, how, and why footwear is fucking you up. Yeah. Now, James, tell me why this is relevant to a jiu-jitsu person because we don't wear shoes when we roll. Exactly. And that's why... I don't I know mean, if you guys knew that or not. Hey, no, flash. Sh- no shoes on the mat. Um, I don't wear shoes when I lift. I haven't for many, many years because I was told from people much higher up than me that if you want to use and access more muscles of your leg, it's much better to be training foot and also you should know if you're going to drop a 20 or 25 kilo plate on your foot sneakers are not going to actually save your toes just so you know so that aside really we've been sold on this sneaker thing running heel striking blah 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 actually walking around with a built up heel is really bad for your achilles and also jamming your toes into these weird sneaker shapes is actually pretty bad for your foot mechanics long term this has a lot of kind of uh, flow up effects in terms of how it affects your calves your hamstrings your hips and ultimately your knees and we just don't think about it we just go oh yeah everyone wears shoes we'll just wear shoes and actually jujitsu people do get ankle problems and often what happens is we don't think about looking after our feet and shoes and flip-flops are fucking it up so we're saying to come back to that why it's relevant for the jujitsu folk that you want to move as well as you can on the mats. You want to squat better. And so if you're living your life wearing footwear all the time mm-hmm. and just, let's say, conventional footwear, that that's uh, limiting your ability to move well and have good mobility and, and function and, on the mats. And long-term disabling you. Like long-term bunching your feet up and making your Achilles tighter, making your squat worse. But here's the other thing. Don't get me wrong. We have advocated people bringing like flip-flops to the gym. So they can go to the bathroom yep. for hygiene purposes. Uh, but here at Jungle Brothers, which is a barefoot gym, people people rock the Birkin stock. That's a bit of a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, Birkin, Birkies are the same shit, though. Big, big really? Grip. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's uh, sorry. Let's let, get into it. Let's let's talk about this. So, Havaianas is the Brazilian phenom. That's right. Everybody's rocking the. the or Havis. if you're an Aussie, Havianas. Haviana. But if you're in Brazil, Haviana. Haviana. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you for uh, translating. Shout that. out to our Brazilian compadres. Much a bit, bit much of Spanish love. there. <laughs> <laughs> but I used, to, <laughs> I used to always get them because I saw everyone wearing them. I'm yeah, like, they were yeah, the sickest. This is the Brazil thing. You get the little flag on there and yeah. man, I'm repping. Yeah, I'm a blue belt now, baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's blue. I got the Brazil blue thongs. You I got it. the fucking the sunga, the little <laughs> oh, short swimmers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 150 he eyes. I'll rock that. <laughs> I'll rock that uh, fat boy bikini. No, it's one of those things that... <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> what? <laughs> fat boy bikini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm actually a fan of the sunga. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> it's not bad. Just culturally, it just doesn't fit here in Australia. But when, I, when I'm there, I'm like... Yeah, these are cool. Like we wear speedos. Sure, that you know, whatever you want, to, whatever we want to. Like people look at the sunga and be like, huh, "It's gay." You're like, <laughs> first of all, it's not cool to say that anymore. But second of all, <laughs> second of all, it's like we wear speedos. Like yeah. the, the alpha dudes wear speedos. Yeah, and so you like, a, you, you, if you're talking about skin and shit, there's no. No, if you're packing yeah. much front, you're not. You're not afraid <laughs> to wear that that tight piece walking out the cold water. Um, I wear shorts. <laughs> but all I was going to say with that is. This is something, and actually... Thongs were the thing. Thongs have, thongs have been a convenient footwear choice. Here in Australia, we call flip-flops thongs. So our American cousins are like, y'all wear thongs on your feet? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. And so we're just talking about uh, flip-flops, but what this does, and actually Kelly Starrett 
brought this up. Kelly Starrett is kind of of supple leopard fame uh, at the Ready State. V- very smart guy. And he's like, if you're an athlete, don't wear flip-flops because the mechanics of your foot wearing flip-flop, to keep it on your foot, you have to grip. So when you, when you are walking, you're doing this quite unnatural gripping action with your big toe and it actually shortens up the tendon in your big toe that runs up. And that actually is really bad for the arch of your foot and bad for your foot mechanics in general, which means your squat will be worse, uh, your Achilles will be way tighter, your calves will be tighter. And this actually doesn't make you more athletic, even though it's convenient. And so I actually stopped wearing, I, uh, I rocked the Jesus sandal, uh, not, yes, offic- not officially worn by Brethren. Jesus, <laughs> but the, uh, the Earth Runner. Uh, a lot of people are getting up on this now. I saw Mark Bell the other day. He's got his version, the power sandal. Right on. Whatever. But the difference here is it has a heel strap. Yeah. So the heel strap means it can just sit on your foot and your foot mechanics can just play the way you want uh, in a natural way. And the difference is we've all been taught to kind of strike with our heel. That's why we've had all these padded heels, Air Max, you know, any kind of amount of cushioning to strike with our heel. But if you walk around barefoot or if you run barefoot, you'll know that you don't strike with your heel if you're running around on concrete. You have a tendency to run on your toes. And if you're running quite fast, you will actually really push off your toes. You'll stay on your toes as you run. Well, forefoot, not toes. Oh, sorry, forefoot, I yeah. should say. Thank you for the clarity there. Let's um, let's let's take – because there's two, two big talking points, I think, in what you just said. The first being uh, like flip-flops and sandals and that kind of thing. So here's, here's what we're getting at today is that conventional footwear – tends to detract from the mechanics of your like your legs yes. right which affects everything upstream as, as JT said so talking about like flip-flops and sandals and that whole thing when you when you take a step barefoot there's an interesting thing that happens where the moment you touch the ground like there's tension created because you're loading the foot and then as you step off that foot and onto the other foot there's actually uh, like a relaxing of the lifted foot. And this happens when you run as well, and it should stay relaxed until it's, it starts to contact the ground again. And so there's this tensioning, relaxing, tensioning, relaxing with that clenching that you need to do to keep your thongs or your sandals or your Birkenstocks on there. You have no relaxing. Yes. So it's a constantly tensed foot and ankle sort of complex, which results in you being excessively tensioned in that area and creates tight ankles. So this is where like, um, it, it seems really like you, most people don't think of it. They're like, oh, I've spoken to people about being barefoot and they say, I wear thongs all the time. Right. And they're like, yeah, like my foot is exposed to the elements, but it's a completely different thing, right? Being yes. barefoot and wearing flip flops or sure. thongs. Um, so that's, that's the first piece to acknowledge. Now, where there's, where, you know, as we're talking about this, people have to keep in mind there's dosages that are okay. Of course. Right? If you're wearing thongs to jujitsu and then when you get off the mats and back home, no big deal. If you're wearing thongs to the beach, you know, and then back, no big deal. But if you're the kind of person that you wear like flip flops every day, yep. you're rolling around in them 80% of the time, mm. 50% of the time, that's an issue because now that's the thing that you're spending the majority of, your foot is spending the majority of its time in and that foot is starting to become molded to the behavior that that footwear allows it to have. That shape, yeah. Yeah, and so I, so this is where like some people can get away with it. Like sure, if you've got really good ankle mobility, you could probably get away with it a bit more. Mm. But if you are the kind of person that struggles with tight ankles – and a good test of that is like, can you comfortably squat with your heels down on the ground? Yeah. Like if you can kind of comfortably squat, your ankles aren't too bad. If you can't, your heels lift, you probably got tight ankles. Yeah. So for that kind of person, we would typically say like, just don't wear thongs. Yeah. Like don't wear them. It's not a footwear choice. Yes, jujitsu, that's fine. Sure. Just go to the toilet, whatever. But like if you're going out for a Saturday and you're wearing thongs. You shouldn't be walking around. Yeah, that's no, fucked up. Yeah, don't do that. And I mean, it, extending this to uh, our, our sister's, who have to wear elevated heels. And that's the thing I've always felt is really unfair. You know, it's a, there's, a, there's a fair expectation that if you have a job, uh, you have a professional job that often... Um, corporate job. Yeah, corporate job. Women... Looked apart. Yeah, you've got to have the good shoes, right? Like, that's a real thing. And shortening up your Achilles in that way has really bad upstream effects also on the lower back because the position it puts you in with your pelvis. Well, that's and, why the heels were a thing, right? Yeah. Because it... Forces the lower back into, forces that lordosis, which yeah. is not, not good long term. No. 
And so then it's like, okay, what are we going to do to counter this? Because don't get me wrong, like as a young a young impressionable teenager, I was really sold on basketball, obsessed with Michael Jordan, like, oh, Nikes are so cool. It's all about what's cool, right? And then over time, as I've come to be more educated about these things and spent a bunch of time running, what I realized is the more I ran in sneakers, the worse my squat got. And the more, the harder I had to work on my calves, my Achilles, just my upstream mechanics to counteract the running. And as soon as I exited the running and I just focused on my, my squatting, it's like, wow, this is so much easier. And I didn't have to spend so much time working on opening up my feet and all of this. So that's why I, for such a long time, have been such a, a big anti-runner. Like that's, um, I, I think if you're trying to really improve your biomechanics, like say you spend all day in work boots or you spend all day in business shoes. The business shoes tend to cramp your feet up. And if you're wearing steel caps, that also impinges on the feet a bit too. I've been wearing some steel caps lately, so I know where it's at. You will have to take a little bit of time to open up your foot. And so we've, we've, we've talked about that before, about rolling out the arch of the foot just to get the foot open and then doing a certain amount of work just to get your, your ankles working well before you start putting a bar on your back and doing all that. If you can improve your footwear and spend less time kind of down binding your feet, then you don't have to spend as much time uh, undoing the badness. Yeah. And so it's, it's an efficiency thing there. So I think just to, um, to finish that, that flip-flop thing, as JT said, with these sandals and whatnot that are gaining some popularity, I know you've got some. I actually used to have some like that. Oh, yeah? That I got after reading um, Born to Run. Okay, yeah. Do you ever read that? Is that, the, is that about the Tara Umara? Yeah. Yeah, I have read it. It's a great book. It's a great book. And those sandals are, are based. They were the thing. They were yeah. the same thing. Like, actually, they looked pretty much exactly the same as the ones you rock. Mm. I think they were Luna. Right. Luna sandal. Yeah. Had them for a while. Never really wore them. And I ended up fucking giving them away or something. Um, but when there's a strap around the heel, that means that you don't have to clench your toes every time you're taking a step. And this is just the pivotal thing. Sandals and thongs or sandals and flip-flops don't have that heel strap. So when you've got a heel strap, the thing stays connected to your foot. You can, you can keep good mechanics. Now, should we go to like footwear, like conventional shoes? So office shoes, sneakers, Converse, yep. Nike Air Max, all the cool shit, right? Um, what, are the, what are the key things that this type of footwear does to your foot that is problematic? So there's, there's two key things. One shortens our Achilles just residually by having an elevated heel that shortens our Achilles it forces us up in this way which if you've already got tight Achilles it makes it worse the other thing it does is it trains us to be in the habit of having this cushion and and being striking with our heel and actually this isn't necessarily the best way especially if we're walking on concrete now there's this a, is there's a third thing before we dive in which is the bunching up of the the toe box the toe box yeah and actually you know squat university has been pretty uh for those of you uh dr aaron horshig he's developing a, a, a shoe yeah he's got the he's got the wide toe box olympic lifting shoe right because he's into olympic lifting great um uh i think he's a he could be a doctor of physiology uh or he's a biomechanist anyway he helps the strongest people in the world get stronger and he's not like a super huge jack dude he's just a super smart guy he's very analytical and he for a long i love time, that that you specify he's not a super huge jack dude which is but he's still a cool guy guys still smart. like he can still be trusted it's, it's, guys. it's acceptable it's acceptable <laughs> like, like it look it speaks to like your inner values or you're like oh no this guy's jack so it's, what's up? it's disappointing <laughs> <laughs> you disappoint <laughs> i'm not impressed with your performance no it's like he's this really smart guy so yeah you can learn from him but i just wish he would use more of his knowledge to be stronger so like, can we can we so step to the side joe you side check me bro yeah. <laughs> squat university on instagram at squat university is always talking about the toe box and how bunching up your toes, whether it be um, women's shoes or just sneakers, anything like that, it doesn't allow us to fully spread our toes, which means we don't get the full use of our foot. And long term, this creates problems in the foot, the ankle, the knee, all the way up the chain to the lower back. And so he's always encouraging people to do certain movements and exercises to counteract this. And he is currently working on a project to design a shoe so that you can uh, do Olympic lifting with a wide toe box. Just to clarify, there's been 
so many people that have been speaking this right like oh yeah years. before squat university yeah, the, the, uh, what's it, it called like the foot collective yeah foot collective my man um barefoot running coach and podiatrist tim branson down Amazing. in down in wollongong um you know, a lot of people have been talking about the benefits this, of barefoot. This is not but new, it's, guys. No, but we've got to bring it to your attention. But it's, it's still something that's kind of niche within the movement or the fitness realm. Mm. Um, and I, yeah, so I, I think like to, to give a simple kind of conceptual understanding for folks, like shoes are something that we've invented. We mm. never, footwear was never a thing. What, what we have always done, you can imagine like as, as, as our ancestors would have done, is try to create something that protects the bottom of the foot, mm. right? And this is where the idea of like like animal skins or some kind of primal sandal kind of thing comes into play. Um, but essentially like our species have been barefoot since the beginning of, of our time. Yes. Right? Hundreds of thousands of years. Now, um, what that means is that the mechanics of the foot are very well designed to do what they have to do. Yes. Now, in the last, when did, when did Nike invent the sneaker? Was it in the back 70s? In 70, yeah, kind of 69, 79, right. yeah. So then all of a sudden, like Nike, like this brand was like, hey, here's this fucking stylish leather thing Shaking. that goes around your foot. And from that point onwards, we became a species that were wearing shoes. Now, the way I kind of like to make people think about it is like, imagine you're trying to play the piano or a guitar or something that requires dexterity of your fingers and hands, yes. but you're wearing like gloves or mittens. You don't have touch sensitivity. You don't have the coordination. If you're wearing mittens, you, you don't even have individual use of the fingers. Right. It's essentially, in many ways, the same thing that we've done to the foot. We've created, by putting our, sh our feet in shoes all the time, we've created unintelligent feet. Yes. And unintelligent feet don't have good sensitivity. They don't have coordination. They're weak. Like, there's a whole bunch of shit yeah. we could say, right? But there's, a, there's also a class thing around this as well, right? Of, of course. But, but and, and this is, I mean, this is very classical of the West, isn't it? Because, yeah, like, if you go for a walk around the city barefoot, people are going to judge you. Like, homeless? Yeah, What's right? Like, you? homeless people don't have shoes. Yeah. Um, but here's the interesting thing. If you, I actually know a lot of people, like, we train barefoot in our gym. We do. Barefoot gym. A lot of people are embarrassed to show their bare feet. Yeah. Right? Because they got fucked up toes and squished and, yeah. you know, and they're like, and, 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 and it's a thing. And it's because, well, we've all agreed that like footwear is what we do. Yes. But the result is we've all got fucked up feet. Mm. I, I, I always notice this when I go to, um, when you travel to more of a developing part of the world. Yeah. You see it in Brazil. You see it in, uh, when I, in Indonesia. Yeah. You'll see it in Mexico. People are often uh, barefoot. And you'll see feet that are like Wider. wide and the toes are spread apart and the feet look strong yes. and the ankles look strong and the car. And you're like, man, like you, if you're someone like us, that's into this kind of we physical development, that. admire you, that. Yeah. You're like, wow, that's a really healthy foot. Mm. You don't see a lot of feet like that in, in the West. Side note, uh, uh, Kelly Slater. So when people, uh, I think Hollywood, they, or wherever it is, uh, they put their hands in the concrete yep. and they sign it. Oh, yeah. He did his feet uh -huh. because he has the full open triangle. Uh, his does he? toes are super wide. Yeah, right. People found it really weird. It's because he's just been walking on beaches, surfing, like since he was like eight years old. Wow. Hardly ever wears shoes and has this fantastic toe spread. And that's why that guy has amazing balance and is the greatest surfer of all time. So, you know, like one of those, uh, it's Western A. Price who yes. was like the godfather of, what was it? He was, he was like, he was talking about ancestral nutrition, um, lifestyle stuff, like back in the day. And I think he went to Papua New Guinea and he spent time with like, you know, legitimate hunter-gatherer tribes and he studied them. He studied their teeth, their hands, their feet, and he took, he documented it. And there's these classic photographs that he took of the soul of, um, someone's like a person's feet, someone from uh, Papua New Guinea. And then he compared that. He had a photo next to it of like someone from back in the England or the States, the sole of their foot. And they were like wearing the leather bound pointy toe. Yeah. And their toes are all squashed and the, you know, the foot's all like Wrecked. mangled, right? It's yeah. bound. Like it's like, we, we see that now. We, if you look at um, foot binding, the historical thing, yeah. you're like, that's so fucked up. Savage. We're really just a couple of steps removed from that. We're doing it to ourselves. Yeah. So it's, so it's such an old thing, but still somehow we just, most of us ignore it. Um, and so this is where, like, this is where people have a hard choice to make because yeah, you want to wear the cool shoes and sure. We're not saying like you have to be barefoot a hundred percent of the time. Aren't we? Isn't well, that what we're saying? I think, I think you should be barefoot way more 
then for sh- yeah, for sure. I mean, whatever. You go to a wedding or some <laughs> shit, wear some shoes, right? You got my permission. But generally speaking, like you, you want your feet to express themselves. Sure. I think the difficulty now is what we're seeing is we live in cities more, and less people have gardens. We've got less space. There's yep. less lawn. You know, walking around at home barefoot. You know, I think also we've had a lot of fear put into us around. Oh. You know, and it, but I'm not what saying if you step on a, something, some broken glass, a needle, yeah, whatever. Like, if you've got a park near your house, say you live in an apartment, but you know that they they mow the park and they look after it, doing a bit of time barefoot, walking around, doing some calf raises, a bit of running, it, it's good for you. And I mean, I know Nike were like, "Yo, barefoot shoes, we're giving you no support, less shoe at double the price." <laughs> Baboosh, clever, uh, not quite. That's the thing. I actually, the thing that really sold me on this was I was actually, many years ago, there was a thing called, I think it was called uh, Ugly Beast or something like that. It was a, a bunch of guys who used to be at Sydney Uni. They did a thing called The Chaser, uh, which was all political satire. Fuck yeah, that's the guy. You, you know what's up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they went on to do a bunch of other stuff. I love that newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> and they, so then they, they did this thing where they're breaking down ad models, they're breaking down they had a little segment called a little bit bullshit where they'd go ah, honorary doctorates, a little bit bullshit because like Morgan Freeman has 27 honorary doctorates. Okay. Yeah. And they had his badge, doctor, 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 doctor. doctor. It's just like, he's just paid money to universities. So they give him a doctorate. They broke down sneakers and they did all the research on what, um, an elevated heel arch support, all this stuff. It does nothing. The performance between someone running barefoot over a certain distance on a track versus somebody running in sneakers, the performance is not better in sneakers. And it, this is incredibly interesting because I'm someone who always grew up, oh, wearing Kayanos, I'm going to run a marathon. Oh, I used to love the Kayanos. Oh, bro, I had, every, I had the Kayanos 17, 19, 21. Oh, my God. Was, when we're in film industry, they were, it was like, oh, which Kayanos you got? Well, yeah, they you were got the, the ones, new ones. Yeah. yeah. Because if you've got like Big a fucking heel. Yeah, like a big elevation. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. You get really sold on it. And then there, there is some podiatrists out there who are like, well, you have to wear shoes. You have to support your arch. Well, how about get a stronger foot? Most people just don't know how to do it. And it takes time. Like you, listening to this conversation, you can't just be like, all right, fuck shoes, I'm out. I'm just going to run around barefoot because your foot is not conditioned. You'll wreck yourself. Yeah, it, it, it does take time to strengthen your calves, strengthen your feet. But I guess the key thing we want to bring to people's attention here is, hey, like, could you make one or two different choices to start improving your foot mechanics? And that will have really good crossover to you having stronger legs, better balance. Yeah, so on that, there's, um, I guess, someone at this point might be thinking, well, we train jiu-jitsu and I'm, I'm on the mats barefoot. Yes. And that's, yeah, it's true you are. Uh, but the thing is with that is that, the jiu-jitsu, like soft mats. Soft mats. Soft mats. It's not, it's not an environment that's giving much feedback to your feet because it's an accommodating it is. Right, space. Um, it's like, uh, how can I liken it? It's like if you, live, if you lived your whole life on a soft mat, then sure, like it would make sense that that could be what your body needs. But the world, the surfaces, the things that, are, that, are, that you're going to be on most of the time are hard. So your foot needs to be on things that are hard. Yeah. So whether it's timber floor, concrete, rock, whatever, like this is the surfaces you want to be on. You want to develop toughness in the feet. In the same way with your hands, when you start doing hanging for the first time, okay. most people be like, fuck, man, this really hurts my hands. Yeah. You're like, it hurts the skin on my hands. And then after you've done it for a while, it just doesn't, you don't think about you it because you've got tough skin. Um, we're not saying you need to be like super, super calloused. Uh, iron palm training. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those guys with just the fucking... <laughs> the filings. Just fucking knife hand striking into fucking steel. Jackie Chan style. No, not that. <laughs> but it's, it's important that you develop your feet elsewhere from the mats because the mats are not really a, a realistic environment. No. And I, look, you know, that's the thing. I've always thought that like when I lift, I don't wear a belt. I don't wear wraps. I don't wear straps. Like I lift according to thinking I'm translating this to jujitsu. So even though if I do a little bit of stone lifting, I'll use a bit of belt grip because you do need, like I don't use tack or tacky, which is what most strong men use because you, it's very hard to stay close to the big stone. I try to keep it as just me in shorts and a shirt. That's what I prefer. Even though there's plenty of people who argue you will get stronger if you use a belt, I can't cinch up a, 
weight belt when I'm going to – hang on a second. I'm going to just uh, take you down. I've just got to censor a weight belt. I try to make sure whatever training I'm doing off the mat is going to translate to the mat. I also live my life according to that. So what we can do is we can actually lose the flip-flops, lose the big puffy sneakers, and actually start to wear footwear, which isn't going to cripple us long-term and absolutely helps us be better in life and for the mat. So here's a caveat to this where, where I think exceptions can be made. Um, in terms of the training environment. So let's say you're in the gym and you're hearing this, you're like, okay, cool, I'm going to be barefoot more often. I get it. Um, we obviously don't like sneakers from the point of view, particularly for lifting, because you're sitting atop a, a big fat layer of foam, mm. which is unstable. And so it's kind of like trying to stand on pillows and perform your deadlift. It just, mm. it doesn't make sense. You want connection to the floor. Um, but for someone who's got really tight ankles, I will often say like, man, like, if your ankle mobility or lack of is impeding your ability to, to squat well and build strength mm. and mobility through this exercise, I've got no issue with that person wearing some weightlifting shoes. Sure. Which have some heel elevation. They do. Um, but it's hard. It's a hard-soled shoe. So it's essentially like a wooden block underneath your foot. It gives you that connection to the ground. Now, I'm not saying rely on that accessory forever, mm. but if that's what enables you to get the benefit of the exercise now – while at the same time you're working on your ankle mobility, you're stretching your calves, you're improving that so that down the track, maybe you don't have to wear these, you don't have to use this accessory. Yeah. That for me is fine. I think that's appropriate. And actually, I, I, a cheaper option is just to use different levels of weight plate. So that way you can actually gauge where you're at. Like you might start with like a inch level elevation, 25 millimeters, but then you're like, oh, I, you know, I'm working on my mobility. I'm going to get a, two and a half kilo plate, which is only, you know, half an inch or 15 mil or whatever. And then you're gradually, you can actually actively look to reduce that. So you're progressing time. the progressing or regressing the assistance, assistance in a sense. Yeah. 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 I totally agree with that. Um, I think that's a really important distinction to make, but on that, I think there's never a case for training in your big puffy sneakers. No. When I see people posting that, they're like, Oh, working on my deadlift, wherever you're like, man, ditch the fucking sneakers. Yeah. Get some. So the shoes we showed at the beginning, we got these barefoot shoes. Vivo, Vivo Barefoot is the brand we rock. Um, they have a wide toe box. Yep. They have an extremely thin sole. So think of it just like a, a sheet that protects the skin. Yeah. And zero elevation. And that's all they are. And now some people look, so I know Jess, mm, she's like, I just hate the way they look. <laughs> I'm like, does. fair enough. If you hate yeah. them, you hate them. You know, whatever. You got you to make your choice. Do you want to be fashionable or do you want to be Sh Shout out functional? to your bad knees, Jess. <laughs> I hope you watch this. Hate to say it, but um, <laughs> love to say it. But you can do it, right? You can be bare. You can buy barefoot footwear. Vivo and all these other brands do a range of like office footwear. Yeah, I got boots like hiking yeah, boots from the, Vivo. You also got like some leather kind. Yeah, of like suede, like more, desert boot, more fashion style. Yeah, yeah, they're fucking cool. They're great. I mean, they're wide, right? They look like a duck bill. But that's. But for me, I'm like, oh, they look great. I don't. Other people like they look shit. Oh, fuck like, them! Like it, it, well, look, it's really like care. it's one of those things. It's like. Yeah, how much? It's like fashion versus function. It's like, yeah, I'm wearing Gucci. Yeah, I'm wearing Prada. Yeah, but y your calves are two dollar. Like it doesn't <laughs> mean shit to me. Are you have you got Ferrari legs? Have you actually got wheels? Because if you don't have strength and mobility in your legs, then you just don't get as much respect. Like clearly, you move in circles where people give a fuck about how you look, not how you function, and. That means maybe you need to change your circles. And I believe that when you move to jujitsu and you're in that community, there's more people. I mean, obviously people get caught up with the gi fashion thing, but it's about what you can do. And that's the great equalizer, right? It doesn't matter what circle of life you came from, your education, nothing. What you can do on the mat is what matters. Yeah. And I think what I'm trying to get at here, all personal biases aside, um, is just – if you have a healthier body, it doesn't matter what you wear, you're doing well, you know? And it's much better to have the option than not have the option. Strength and mobility gives you options. Lack of strength and lack of mobility does not give you options. Yeah, you don't want to be the person that's taken like the summer holiday to a tropical place and there's a beautiful beach and the rocks and, you know, you're like cruising around, maybe taking some photos with your partner, Instagram and shit on the right. And then you're like trying to move from the rocks into the ocean and you're like, 
Uh, and you got, you know, these weak, like uh, degraded, like morph little feet because you've been wearing office shoes the whole time in your life back in the big smoke. Yeah. It's like you want to be like, you want to be comfortable in all of these environments. You want to be strong in all of these situations. You want to be capable. Yeah. And, and feet are really like, for, that's, your, that's your one point of contact to the earth. Yes. Like arguably the hands are the next important thing, but yep. the feet are like, it's, it's an essential Yes. So, yeah, you got to have it. I'll give a cautionary tale, just a quick one. Please. When you remember the five finger shoes? Oh, the yeah. The Vibram yeah. five fingers? Of course, yeah. So, when they first came out, I was like, they're fucking sick. And I went to the States and I, uh, it was at a time when the Australian dollar was, it actually peaked the weekend that I got there. Oh, wow. And it was an amazing couple of weeks in the States because everything was extremely affordable. It was like a parody. Yeah, and everything there is cheaper, like relatively yes. anyway. So, I bought a bunch of shit. I bought some five fingers. Right. So I'm staying at Santa Monica and I'm like, man, these shoes feel fucking great. They were my first like proper pair of barefoot shoes. Right. And I was super excited, primal guy. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go down to the Venice Beach. I was staying at Venice, sorry. I'm going to go down to the Venice uh, boardwalk and I'm just going to fucking mack it in these things. Yeah. And I went for this sick run and man, I was flying in these shoes. I was like, man, I felt so good. I was hammering it. I could feel the springiness of the legs. I could feel the way the foot was responding. And I hammered it all the way to Santa Monica. Wow. I did some training and shit. So I don't know, maybe I ran a couple of Ks or something. Yeah. Um, felt great for the rest of that day. For the next two weeks, oh. my calves oh. were destroyed. <laughs> like I had the worst DOMS oh. I've ever experienced of any muscle group. Wow. For the longest period of time. Oh. Like two days into it, I'm like, I got to go see someone. Like I fucking hurt myself here. This is real bad. Wow. And it was okay, but it just, it was a two week stint. I, like I, I couldn't walk properly for like three, four days. Um, I did, like I couldn't load the forefoot, you know? And uh, anyway, the cautionary tale there is like, I just went from zero to a hundred in this, in this thing. And this is what we're saying. If you're not accustomed to being barefoot, you need to give your feet time to build up strength and, and familiarity with this new stimulus. So, you know, maybe it's, you start to walk a little bit. Maybe if you, if you are buying some barefoot shoes, maybe you just wear them for a couple of hours each day. Yeah. You know, don't go out for a run. Don't do what I did. Mm. Ease your way into it. Um, there is a case for people who have foot mechanics that are like, some people do need orthotics. That is a thing. But the vast majority of people just need to strengthen their feet. So it's a, a personal journey worth going on. Just be smart about it. For sure. Fam, thank you. Guys, if you need help, you know where you can get us, bulletproofforbjj.com. Jump on the program, Strength, Mobility for Jiu-Jitsu. It's all there. If you use the code BJJ Podcast, you'll get 20% off your subscription. Uh, our app will be dropping soon. We're in the final phases of testing now, so keep your eye out for that. For users of our program, once the app is ready, we will be transitioning you across to that. Uh, we'll take care of it, and you'll be contacted in due time. And, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. We appreciate you. Please give us a comment. If you're on Spotify or whatever, leave us a review. We appreciate that. Trust. Thanks, fam. We'll see you next time. Peace.